1995, the government of General Sani Abaja, which had initially played down media report of a coup attempt, arrested hundreds of people for alleged involvement in the plot. Government sources claimed that the coup was scheduled to begin on the 1st of March 1995 during the Adelphi Tree Festival. Among those arrested in connection with the coup were the former second-in-command, retired General Shehu Musa Yaradua, former head of state General Olishigun Obasanjo, and an editor who had published news about the coup and several others. Three other army officers wanted in connection with the coup had sought asylum in Ghana. The government was accused of using the plot as a ploy to purge the military of officers that were not in support of the regime or at the very least were not trusted by the regime. In this video, we will bring to your view a detailed account of this coup. Welcome to Hispan Media In-Depth History The coup trial of 1995 was described as a complete sham. Over 300 military personnel and civilians were arrested and tortured into admitting committing a coup. Notwithstanding, the coup was labeled the phantom coup and journalists who reported as such were arrested and tortured. Chris Ayao, a popular Nigerian journalist with a Sunday magazine was arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment for reporting on the failed coup, but the sentence would later be commuted to 15 years. Ayaun's case was notable because even before her publication of the existence of a supposedly failed coup, the director of defense information denied the existence of any coup. Three days later, however, Abdul Salami Abubakar, the chief of defense staff, announced that the coup had occurred and was foiled. The special investigation panel which was formed claimed to have found evidence for three different but overlapping coup plots. One of the coups allegedly headed by Colonel Laon Guadabe and Colonel Belo Fadile. The second was led by Major Akinloye Akinyemi. And the third coup was alleged to have been led by General Shehu Musa Yaradua, the former second in command to General Lushigun Obasanjo. And a trial was recommended. During the coup trial, General Lushigun Obasanjo, a retired four star general, objected to being tried by a junior officer. Perhaps the only officer with enough rank to try him was General Sani Abacha himself, but his objection was overruled. These are the alleged plot and the charges placed against the accused. Plot 1. Yaradua General Shehu Musa Yaradua was charged with conspiracy to commit treason, concealment of treason, illegal possession of firearms, and stealing. The prosecution alleged that Yaradua instigated another plot by inciting Davangida's former ADC, Lieutenant Colonel Shambo Dasuki, who had been a key member of the Babangida's regime and who was also the son of the Sultan of Sokoto, Ibrahim Dasuki. Dasuki was out of the country and unlike Obasanjo, he did not return to face trial. He was declared a political fugitive. Plot 2 Colonel Laon Guadabe and Colonel Belo Fadile Although away from Nigeria, Dasuki was accused of involving another military man, Belo Fadile, to recruit other soldiers for the coup. After being interrogated by the special investigation panel, Belo Fadile said he was instructed by Dasuki to meet Yaradua, who sponsored the coup financially. According to the prosecution, Dasuki also asked Belo Fadile to recruit Lawan Guadabe. Belo and Guadabe were said to have met in Bonny Camp in Lagos in 1994. What was discussed at the meeting according to the prosecution was a plot to attack the presidential villa using former presidential bodyguards guided by a map gotten from some Americans. Guadabe allegedly contributed money to the plot. The prosecution also said that the plotters were going to assassinate General Sani Abacha using a sniper on the 1st of March 1995 at the Edel Fitri praying ground. After displacing Abacha, they planned to use retired senior army officers to gain credibility for the new regime, then discard them as soon as their regime stabilized. Both Yaradua and Obasanjo were retired military officers and former second in command and head of state respectively. Plot number 3. Major Akinyemi 
The prosecution accused Major Akin Yemi of starting a security company which trained paramilitary officers who would be used to take over the government. This plan involved guerrilla warfare which would take place in Lagos, Ibadan, Inugu, Benin, Jos, Abuja and Port Harcourt. Akin Yemi is from the southwest and had been implicated in a coup five years earlier but emerged unscathed. All the defendants pleaded not guilty. Some of the defendants, including Belo Fadile, who had originally gave evidence against their co-alleged conspirators, retracted their statements. Yaradoa admitted to having met Belo twice but only at the lobby of Hilton Hotel, where they had brief conversations where he couldn't even remember the full details of one of such meetings. Yaradoa was also accused of meeting 150 supporters of the coup in Lagos at the end of February 1995. But he said the alleged period was during Ramadan and he was with his family in northern Nigeria. Belo Fadile was also tortured to admit to meeting Obasinjo on his farm to discuss the coup. But at the same time, Obasinjo was either not in the country or was not hosting guests at the office on his farm. Farid Awaziri, former chairperson of the EFCC, served in the legal team of the Special Investigation Panel. She revealed recently that the chief accuser, Belo Fadile, who claimed he attended a coup meeting in Yaradwa's Ikoi home, could not identify the house when driven around the neighborhood. Neither could he identify critical places where clandestine meetings allegedly occurred with the general in attendance. His claim that about 50 guests attended a dinner in Yaradwa's sitting room was proven false. Caught in the web of lies, he later confessed that an SSS operative gave him a written report with the instruction to copy the information about Yaradwa's involvement in the coup. When taken into the general's home, he found a living room that could barely accommodate 20, not up to 50 visitors. He had lamely changed his statement to, I was standing by the window. On Obasanjo, Farida Waziri said, First, General Obasanjo was a superior military officer to all those at the helm of the current government. Second, most of the officers with whom he allegedly conspired were not even commissioned into the Nigerian army when he was a ranking officer. There was no way Obasanjo would have connived with junior officers who had no reason to be loyal to him, especially against Abacha. When the prosecution could not find enough evidence to nail Obasanjo for treason, he was charged for concealment of treason. What is ironic, however, is that Obasanjo invented concealment of treason as a crime in 1976 as a way to punish officers or those who knew about Dimka's coup against Moritola but were physically unable to participate and could not report the coup. On July 4, 1995, the tribunal reached a verdict. It announced that 51 people had been charged, with eight defendants acquitted. Three of the accused, including Dasuki, were not available for trial. All the remaining 40 accused were convicted for various crimes, although Brigadier General Chujuka, who read the judgment, did not reveal the names of the 40 or their sentences. There were rumors of death sentences for Basenjo and Yaradua. Habitually, Abacha said nothing and let the rumors descend into an ethnic affair. In 1976 and 1986, two foiled coup attempts were carried out by soldiers from Nigeria's Middle Belt who were sentenced without clemency. With the accused in this case being Northern and Southern soldiers, Middle Belters wanted the same no mercy treatment for the accused and the convict. As part of propaganda to gather public support, an edited 50-minute documentary program was aired by the government. The heavily edited program featured excerpts from the trial, including clips of Belo Fadile reading his testimony. One of the clips showed him thanking the tribunal for its patience and the special concession given to him and commending it for reinforcing his belief in the rule of law. It also showed other suspects and defendants mechanically reading statements that incriminated Yaradua and Obasanjo, as well as still photos with no audio of Obasanjo's response to the allegations. On October 1st, 1995, 
Abacha made a nationwide address where he said none of the convicts would be killed and would instead face prison terms varying from 15 to 25 years. Journalists who were arrested as an accessory to the FARF were sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. It is a general consensus that the 1995 coup was a ploy by the Abacha regime to silence its opponents. Let us know your thoughts in comment section. Click here to get more information about the 1997 coup against the same Abacha regime. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Hispo Media. And I will see you in that video. Thank you very much for watching.